Okay. Okay. So uh, I am to speak on this uh, IRC one one two, which is the uh, the heart of the uh, design of the concrete road bridges, both RCC as well as the pristine concrete. And uh, now we have a code that is IRC one one two, which was revised recently in the last year twenty twenty. um and um, the initially published in 2012 and there were there number of revisions and uh, incorporating all the revisions it was again revised in year 2020 so it was first published in 2011 then uh, the first time irc had a one single code which is applicable for both rcc bridges and pristine concrete bridges prior to that we used to have a two codes that is a irc 18 for a pristine concrete and irc 21 for rcc and uh, these codes were based on a working stress method for quite a long time in fact it was uh, in use since uh, 60s so we took almost uh, 50 years to convert these our codes into a limit state code and um, uh so after uh, quite a uh, good if, uh, efforts from all of uh, the members uh it was finally published in 2011 uh so the, the this particular document which is a uh, the design of the concrete bridges with a limit state code uh the code committee chose the best document as a, our euro codes uh, which is on 1922 part 1 and part 2 the euro code part 1 is the general code for the concrete structures and part 2 is for the uh, basically whatever the modifications are there for the general code that they was spell out in a part 2 for the bridges so this is the background of this uh, limit state code which we are using for design of a our uh, road bridges so if you just uh, uh, glance through the content of this irc 112 uh, it has uh, almost 16 chap 18 chapters and uh, uh, number of uh, annexures so this and chapters we call it them as the sections so section 2 is the introduction 3 is the definitions of various terms and there is a one general chapter which is section 4 then what is the basis of a design what is the assumptions how uh, the code committee has made how uh, 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 for the that this particular code so that they have spelled out in this uh, uh, section 5 then uh, uh, what material properties uh, we are emphasizing while designing these bridges the properties and their design values so that are spelled out in uh, section number 6 then analysis is covered in section number 7 the uh, ultimate limit state for the linear elements in section number uh, 8 and 9 then uh, for a shear of a various types torsion induced deformation that is on a section number 10 and 11 serviceability limit state in section number 12 pistesing system section number 13 durability is is covered in section number 14 then some guidelines for the detailing it is covered generally in section number 15 uh then the detailing one for a structural specific structural member is section 16 ductile detailing for seismic resistance again uh, in sec uh, section number 17 and the last is the uh, basically the quality control material and workmanship so these are the 18 chapters the entire uh, code is been divided into and then there are a uh, few annexures uh what is the basis of this actions which uh, mr panjwani has uh, uh, explained uh, what are the various design situation and uh, how the actions are being combined then additional information about data regarding the properties of the concrete and steel if somebody wants to do a very uh, detailed uh, investigations analysis then they can refer to this particular annexer for more updated updated data then uh, what are the various standards and other normative references used in the code 
then there was the one annexer annexer 4 uh, which was kept uh, for quite a long time because uh, from the switching over or transferring from the working stress to limit stress method the industry will take some time so i think uh, till 2000 uh 16 or 17 uh this particular annexure was there it was a basically a um the both the ports uh, combined together that is irc 18 and 21 it was kept in this annexure now it is it has been deleted completely then there are certain quality control procedures for hdp sealing because that plays a very important role for a durability of a stress concrete to bridges uh then the uh, design considerations for the construction stages then the stay uh, see this humidity plays a lot of uh, important role in the uh, um, uh, finding out the creep and shrinkage and other uh, phenomena of the concrete bridges so one uh, that data has been uh, introduced as annexure 7 and recently how to uh, check the bridges our uh, road bridges for a fatigue uh, phenomena that is recently added as annexure 8 and then there are some informative annexures which are not uh, if, if somebody wants to use it they can use which is the design of a concrete shell elements the mechanism of a deterioration of a concrete structure which is again an informative um, section and then uh, this is the one old uh, clause from the irc 21 how to work out the effect uh, of a or effective width for the live loads on a uh, deck slab so this is how the structure of this particular uh, uh, irc 112 so uh, i have given a two uh, slots two lectures of a two hours each so uh, that is a part 1 and part 2 so this particular code i have planned to divide into two parts uh, the today that is the uh, part 1 is the introduction basis of a design material and properties and their design values then uh, analysis and uh, ultimate limit state Uh, for linear elements so that i will try to cover uh, in today's lecture and the next uh, friday ha uh, that is the part 2 which is again a number of topics are there like uh, ultimate limit state for a shear punching shear torsion induced deformation sls uh, the description of the piston system durability detailing material quality control and then i will try to cover uh, one uh, uh, example hmm, of a uh, stressed uh, eye girder bridge it all depends on uh, how much time we'll have so uh, this is how i have uh, uh, structured this two lectures if we get some time then i will cover uh, the first part of the uh, the next lecture if time permits or uh, so let's move ahead uh, so i will uh, directly switch over to the uh, section 5 which is the basis of a design so when you design a structure how what are the underline assumptions or what are the uh, what is the basis uh, of uh, this uh, design of the structure um again i am just uh, touching some important points i am not going through the entire code uh, which is available uh, for uh, study any time uh, yeah so as i told you earlier this particular code is a based on a principles of a limit state or a limit state philosophy uh so what is the limit state it is a condition of a structure beyond beyond which it is no longer fulfills the relevant design criteria so whether it is a strength stability serviceability or fatigue so after reaching that particular state how huh, we can say that now the structure is no longer um um uh, safe or serviceable how uh, for that uh, intended use the structure designed by limit state method is a proportion to sustain all the actions actions means loads in the uh, this particular code uh, we have used the nomenclature of a euro code for a loads which we call as the actions likely to occur during its design life and to maintain fit for use with appropriate level of reliability for each limit state okay so this is a very important uh, part of the basis of a design so irc 112 intend to uh, needs to be fully understood 
as it is the key to design of a structures that have an acceptable level of safety serviceability durability and economy with opportunity for innovation so that is a very important see uh, in earlier codes it was a very um uh, you can say a rigid code but this particular code which is based on a euro code it provides a designer lot of flexibility in the design okay and that's how particular code has been devised or uh, written say for example uh, in earlier code that is irc 18 uh, we are not allowed to use a partially prestressed concrete structure uh, bridges this for the all the bridges they have to be a fully prestressed without any tension at any part of that uh, prestressed structure but now this particular code allows to use a partial uh, prestressed uh, structure so it can it is a basically a uh, some part gets registered by prestressing the remaining uh, effects from the action is registered by as a reinforced concrete structure and that again opens a lot many options for a design so that is the beauty of this particular code and it is a very transparent code it gives a lot of uh, background uh, how these uh, various clauses have been uh, devised what is what are the principles behind these clauses uh, it is not a black box it is a quite uh, transparent uh, code and uh, it is uh, based on any like any other limit state code it is the best it is a basically a semi probabilistic uh, method using a partial safety factors so i will just briefly uh, describe what is this semi probabilistic method most of you may be already knowing it uh, but just to uh, have a uh, cover this basis of design i will touch upon it uh, the structural calculation normally uh, imply the following three steps the calculation of a structural actions or a loads effect or a response or you can call a stresses and that's why the nomenclature is s then the calculation of the resistance or capacity of that structural element or a structure as a whole which is called as a r resistance and what we do in design we compare this r and s and just we say that structure is safe once this margin between r and s is more than zero okay so these are the simple basic thing in a design so whenever how you design the structure for any effect say if it is actually loaded column or a pier or it is a combination of axial loads or a, a bending moment or a shear force so whatever that load effects are there are there we uh, see that this load effects are um, uh, lesser than the resistance or resistance of the particular element or the section is more than that um, effect so this is the basic things and this particular philosophy you can you know that you can apply anywhere say for example traffic junction or uh, if the or say uh, the channel if the channel the flood is the basically a, the stress or the load effect and the the channel the width and uh, cross section is a, uh, the capacity okay so that the capacity of the channel should be more than the discharge so this particular principle is applicable in all um, uh, phenomena of uh, engineering and again this can be uh, based on the reliability methods so the loads material properties structural and uh, mechanical models and the construction method involve a number of uncertainties which required an acceptable margin between r and s so all of you know that all these effects whether it is a uh, uh, the load effect or the capacity they are not the deterministic quantities they are the uh, basically uh, uh, involves a lot of uncertainties so with that uncertainty how to design a structure for various effects 
So here, as I told you earlier, the action means the loads impose deformations. Uh, the effect of actions or uh, action effects are basically the internal moments, forces, bending moments, shear forces, deformation, etc. The strength is a mechanical property of the material. And the resistance is the mechanical property of the cross section. See, the material means the it is a property of the concrete. When you say the cross section, it is a combined property of the concrete as well as the reinforcement. Okay, and if it is a uh, member, again the uh, the buckling uh, um, the phenomena again is a part of the resistance. Okay. So all these uh, uh, things are not uh, deterministic. Again, every at every uh, level, uh, uh, the uncertainty is, uh, uh, is involved. So this uncertainty is uh, basically, for example, if you take a wind, okay, and uh, wind, uh, it could be a five uh, uh, kilometer per hour, or it could be a say 150 kilometer per hour. And uh, depending on uh, uh, its frequency or duration, you can plot these histograms. And uh, so there is a lot of variation, a lot of uncertainties. And we have to deal as an engineer or as a designer with these uncertainties. This is from the load side. Same thing is applicable for the resistance. And you know when the we design, big design the concrete, uh, we again get a uh, quite a good variation depending on your quality control uh, in the st uh, strength of the concrete. Okay, so, so the, uh, uncertainty is there from the load side, uncertainty is there from the resistance side. Now, how to deal with that? So, uh, uh, for the last almost say, you can say 75, 80 years, how people are working on this particular problem, especially. And in number of areas, especially say example, aerospace industry or um, uh, um, in many, many fields. Okay. So what they have devised is uh, basically the uh, method, reliability method. So what, see, this is the distribution for the um, uh, strength uh, or uh, for, for the um, uh, loads. And this is the distribution for the resistance. So the um, the challenge for the designer is uh, how to separate out these two curves from each other. As they are spaced apart more and more, you get a more safe design. Okay, only where they are basically intersecting with each other, uh, where this um, uh, the loads are more than this resistance, there is a probability of a failure. Okay. So there is a mean value for the loads. There is a mean value for the resistance. And uh, depending on the shape of this uh, curve, bell shape, uh, there is a standard deviations for uh, both the sides. And uh, if you uh, subtract one uh, uh, diagram from the other, uh, other curve, uh, you get the distribution for the margin. So the margin is basically uh, uh, the mean of the margin is a mu r mean for the uh, resistance minus mean of the load. Okay, and then the same thing is for the standard deviation. So this is the mean for the margin, uh, margin, and this is the uh, mean for the uh, sorry standard deviation for the margin, and then this involves a factor called a reliability factor called a beta. So the two variables uh, of the failure probability uh, PF margin is the R minus S. This is the difference of the uh, mean value. This is the actual the standard deviation, which is the square root of a sum of the squares. And this beta is basically this mean divided by mean of the margin, divided by the standard deviation of the margin. Now, this beta plays a, uh, gives a lot of information. See, for example, this standard deviation is more, means what? Uh, the curve will be a flatten. It will be flatten more. That means that the quality control for this resistance is a very poor at a site. If the quality control is poor, this curve becomes more and more concentrated towards its mean value. Okay, and that will give a uh, if that particular standard deviation is less. 
so the uh, standard deviation for the margin you will get a higher beta value so the beta value is more means you are your structure is more safe there is a less probability for the failure and there is a direct correlation between the beta and the probability of failure so this is the probability of failure this is a function of a value beta and these are the basically the correlation say for example if the beta is say 3.75 uh, your probability of failure is a 1 in a uh, 10 to 4 if it is a 4.75 then it is a 1 in a million means if you construct say 1 million beams using the same mixed design same uh, quality control one beam how, how among this millions how that is the probability of the failure okay so uh, at a national level as a, the policy makers decide what should be the beta value for the uh, their country um, uh, in europe there is a um, uh, one uh, council they have decided at a uh, european level certain factors for the uh, this uh, reliability it all depends on uh, what is the uh, the economical condition of that nation if it is a rich country then they will try to have a more and more beta value if it is a say not that rich country then they will lower down this uh, beta value for their own country and that is happening even for example um uh, in the second world war there was a scarcity of the material especially steel uh, of course that time that reliability method was not uh, very well developed but they have reduced the factor of safety for a steel structure in uk for a certain period so it all depends on what are the social factors or conditions at that particular time um, here in india we don't have a, that policy still so we have basically borrowed the same beta factors from the euro code okay i think everybody is understanding ha uh, if uh, not ha uh, then maybe after the lecture we can again have a discussion no, it's going well sir <laughs> okay fine uh, so <laughs> the probability of uh, having a margin lesser than uh, zero is a uh, basically a probability of the failure right now this is a full fledged reliability method or reliability analysis now in a design office for a day to day designs for a number of a structures it is obviously not practical to follow this particular method right and to uh, implement this method we you need a lot of data uh, for example somebody was asking in the uh, all these uh, vehicular uh, models are they real or they are imaginary okay so actually if you see on the road um uh, in more of a type of a vehicles are flying on the road from the cycle to a very big uh, multi axle uh, trucks with their different uh, numbers so um uh, uh, basically uh, how to capture that data and then uh, convert into this uh, uh, beta value so that is a big uh, exercise so what the code makers have done they have simply uh, simplified this method which is called a semi probabilistic method based on a partial factor safety uh, they have devised uh, partial safety factors again there is a procedure which i can uh, uh, show you here again i will not go to, into the uh, the details of this uh, see there are some sensitivity factors are there and based on the sensitivity factors finally you can work out this gamma factors gamma factor for resistance and gamma factor for uh, loads okay depending on uh, what beta factor you choose uh, for that particular structure okay so this is the basis uh, of the design this irc 112 has adopted fine so all this factor of safety have not come just uh, arbitrarily there is a quite a good uh, thought process is there um, and of course means that validation of a factor of safety uh, uh, means whatever the work, uh, designs who have done using a working stress method always this um, code makers universities and uh, academia they revisit back and revalidate this uh, factor of safety okay so this is a partial uh, safety uh, factor method or you can call it as a semi probabilistic method 
right so i think uh, you all of you must have understood what is the basis for this uh, formulating this 112 in how uh, any bridge how uh, what the aim is there in the mind the first that that bridge or any structure uh, should perform its function for uh, okay so that is called a serviceability limit set and it should be safe against all the actions that is called ultimate limit set with appropriate degree of the reliability during construction and design service life so that the appropriate degree uh, uh, of the reliability is a important uh, um, uh, word so what is it it is acceptable low level of a probability of a failure in meeting its expected performance okay and this is uh, expressed in terms of a the reliability index beta generally in international uh, practice the beta is uh, equal to 4.75 is adopted for the uls and 3.72 for sls okay so this is a more uh, dangerous uh, that's why the beta factor in uh, intended is a uh, kept higher than service level limit state and accordingly the partial factor of a safety is are derived from this target reliability index okay so with that background uh, now uh, what are various limit states so i think all of you must be knowing this is the limit state of uh, equilibrium strength fatigue for a service related it will be um, uh, the internal stresses crack control deformation and a vibration that is a service related limit state um then there are we have to emphasize what are the various design situations we have to uh, cover so the code makers have already uh, uh, thought of discuss uh, during their committee meetings so what could be various design situations which may lead to the failure of a structure and uh, so what should be the combinations and what should be the factors so there are the persistent design situation which is referred to the normal operation condition transient design situation which refers to the temporary conditions like uh, uh, repairs etc accidental like a fire explosion impact or a seismic design situation where um, seismic events takes place in euro code these two things are combined uh, seismic is a part of a accident here we have separated out then uh, uh, the selected design situation shall be sufficiently severe varied so as to encompasses all the conditions that can reasonably be foreseen to occur during the execution and the use of a structure uh, many times uh, you uh, 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 has to design certain very innovative structure uh, which is nobody has done earlier because of the certain site conditions or the requirement from the client so there may be a possibility that whatever the code has specified the load as well as the combination i uh, there may be you may have to consider something more uh, more than the code uh, has specified for that particular structure so that time this particular background how this particular basis of a design is a uh, evolved uh, that information is very very uh, important so how to emphasize those various design situations Uh, so that throughout a service life, it will have a um, uh, have a safe um, uh, situation. Many times, uh, say the, the airports, like uh, that the airport in Japan, which is uh, constructed over sea, uh, was done for the first time. So um, our normal design methods are not applicable. So they have to uh, choose a different philosophy altogether using the reliability methods. okay so uh, again the actions are classified as a direct actions like a forces i apply directly on the structures indirect that is a uh, say deformations or the settlements temperature etc or they are classified depending on the time like a permanent action for example self weight variable actions like a live loads accidental actions like a barge impact and then uh, uh, some of the actions are called a quasi permanent though say for example live load vehicular load um 
there may be a, some variation for the uh, heavy vehicles, but there is a say, constant uh, load is always uh, applied on the bridges. Okay, of a certain uh, size of the vehicles. So that is classified as a quasi-permanent uh, loads or actions. The displacing force is a permanent action with a time-dependent variation. Then again, it, they are uh, classified as a static or a dynamic, depending on the, uh, the their accelerations. Then there are characteristic values, uh, combinational values. Okay, considering all these things, our IRC six has given those load combinations to make a life easier of the designer. Um, uh, again, uh, the same, uh, the representative value for the properties of the material, statistical variations, strong correlation with the material. So considering all these effects, hmm, uh, this particular uh, numbers are given in the code. I'm going a bit faster because uh, now it is almost uh, 4 of 45. Then, uh, uh, the analytical methods to evaluate the behavior of the structures, the global analysis, local analysis, idealization, the design based on the full scale testings. That is another uh, good thing that this particular code has done. If, for example, it is a difficult to prove your design using the numbers, you can go with the actual full scale testing and prove that you are, whatever your design is there is a safe. And that is very uh, regularly used for a design of a new type of crash barriers, then the pre-stressing anchors, etc. So there, actually, the manufacturer uh, cast or um, uh, do the models of uh, full scale in their factory and uh, do the testing because these particular elements are very uh, difficult to analyze and prove that they are safe. Especially, you can say the pre-stressing anchors. Lot of non linearity is there in that design. When you apply such a huge tremendous force concentrated at particular location, uh, everything, the concrete, steel, uh, they undergo uh, the yield or say non linear uh, behavior. And to prove it on a paper, it is re really a nightmare. So the, the code uh, gives the uh, permission uh, to prove your design by actual testing. Okay, so which was not there in the earlier codes. So that is also made the uh, life easier for the designer. Otherwise, in the old days, there is a, used to be always fight between the proof consultant or authority with the designer. Um, this, you prove that whatever the busting reinforcement you are providing behind the anchorages are safe. So it is a, literally impossible to prove it on a paper. Okay, so that was the basis of a design. So now we'll move to the next chapter. That is the section number six which is the material uh, properties and their design values. See, again, um, uh, when you design, uh, of, uh, you know the loads, and now to know the what is the resistance, how, of course, you should know the properties of the material which you are going to use for a design uh, your bridge or any structure. So those properties, uh, they are, can be physical, mechanical, chemical, and so on. And um, uh, so what, what are these properties of strength, stress strain curves, or a constitution relationships for the intention and compression, elongations, or ductility, the response of that material to the dynamic loading, like earthquake or blast loading, then the more important for the composite material, like a uh, bond between the uh, rebars and the concrete. And then uh, the resistance uh, to the corrosion, that is the durability. So all this data you should have uh, before you start the design uh, of any structure. Now, uh, if uh, you must have participated in the uh, load testing or the cube testing or cylindrical test, uh, in your uh, BTEC level, uh, in your laboratory. And when you draw the stress strain curves, uh, every cylinder or cube will have a different, not miss, uh, not very much different, but uh, this uh, curves will not be uh, identical or uh, same. 
So there is a lot of variation. Now, for a design, then you need to have a standard model, model for the uh, this particular properties, which is called a designer prop, uh, design properties or a simplified descriptions with respect to the actual properties. For example, if you take a steel and you taste the uh, rebars, this, these are the kind of a uh, stress and relationship you get actually when you taste in the laboratory. But uh, it is not possible to use these curves in actual design. So what we do, we simplify these curves in form of a such bilinear curves for the design. Okay, so these are the called the design models. And these are the actual uh, behavior of the material. And the same is valid for other uh, materials like a concrete. Okay, concrete or it, is a, it can be a timber or aluminium, whatever it is. So for making our life easier, how oh, this uh, code gives you a simplified uh, design models. So in IRC 112, uh, the, in this section uh, 6, uh, there are three sections uh, or clauses, uh, 6.2, 3 and 4, uh, for the reinforcement, the stressing steel and the concrete. And all these properties are given in very much detail in these uh, three sections. Okay, um, and uh, uh, in this particular section, that is the section number six, um, quite uh, simplified data is uh, provided. If somebody wants to have a more detailed analysis, that detailed analysis uh, or more sophisticated models are given in a lecture uh, A2. Okay, so the user can refer to those uh, properties uh, and uh, do a more uh, uh, sophisticated uh, designs. So the first is the untensioned steel reinforcement, or uh, you can call it reinforcing steel. Uh, there are various types, hot rolled, thermomechanical, then decoil rods, and so on. And the uh, code gives this particular table, which gives the uh, what are various uh, grades, then the uh, uh, what is a uh, uh, relevant IS or BIS standard, then the what are the uh, minimum specifications like uh, ill stress or proof stress, then uh, the maximum strength and uh, minimum elongation percentage. Okay, so that is a basically a given as a ready reference from the uh, IS 1786. Then the minimum strength uh, they have specified it, if it is the same mild steel, you need a get a uh, plateau uh, well defined. Then uh, TMT bar again, there is a, uh, some uh, plasticity is there at certain range. And these are the cold work uh, HYZ steel, which is nowadays almost banned or it is not available for use. In the 80s or 70s, this was a very popular uh, steel that we used to call a torch steel, which is not nowadays not available. So mainly we use a HYSD uh, or uh, TMT bars. Miles clear, so very rarely we use. So these ductilities and uh, is going in that table. And then the E value is uh, generally 2 into 10 to 6 MPA. And these are the idealized uh, simplified bilinear diagram now for the reinforcement. So the first initial part, see this uh, black line is the uh, um, without uh, factor of a safety, if you divide this uh, now these numbers by factor of safety gamma s, you will get this uh, again a dotted line, um, this by scaling down. Of course, this uh, e value will remain same. Only this uh, characteristic yield point will come down to the design yield point. And uh, if you want to use this uh, sloping upward graph, you can use it. But that time you have to limit the strain in the steel to 90% of the, your characteristic uh, strain in the steel. But if you are using, want to use this uh, horizontal part, uh, then, then you don't have to check this uh, limiting strain in the steel. So this is the idealized uh, uh, strain diagram given for the uh, reinforced uh, steel. Uh, then again, I have explained how to derive for a particular steel. Say for if you take a FE 500 grade steel, how to devise this uh, stress strain diagram. 
So uh, I am going to share this presentation to uh, IAB. So they will circulate it and you can go through this calculation. It's very simple. So I will not go to... See, only thing what you have to remember that um, uh, this um, um, uh, Epsilon UK, uh, which is a 0 0.05 or 5% uh, given in our IRC 112, uh, in a clause number 6.22, uh, the 90% of that will be a 0 0.045. So you have to stop uh, here at that particular point in the design. And then um, this um, uh, ill point, which is a 500 divided by gamma m, which comes in uh, 435, so up to, so this, and then there is a uh, this uh, E value, you know, from this point and the E value, you will come to know what is the, uh, the ill strain. Means after that, the, uh, still will yield. So these numbers are you uh, important uh, in your uh, design. I will explain you uh, later. So this is for enforcing steel. Now the crystallization steel covered in our section 6.3. These are the various type of uh, crystalline steel from the wires to strands to bars. And these are the various applicable BI standards. And uh, then again, the whatever the properties, we uh, minimum properties we required that is specified in a different uh, BI standards. Okay. So there are breaking loads, proof stress for normal relaxation, low relaxation. And this is, these are for the bar, these are for the strands, these are for the wires. Again, uh, this is the more or less uh, the stress strain curve when we test the strand in a laboratory. But again, to use it for the design purpose, it is a cumbersome. So the code has made it simplified to test and curve, or you can call it the design uh, model uh, in this particular format. Again, this is the dotted is uh, idealized. If you divide by gamma factor, then you will get this particular uh, curve. Uh, again, if you are wanted to use this sloping part, you have to restrain the strain. Otherwise, there is no uh, limit on the strain when you are using a horizontal or uh, arm. Uh, then, uh, uh, this is again the, for particular steel, uh, I have given the numbers, uh, you know, how this uh, stress strain diagram can be worked out, uh, which you can refer to this particular slide. So, uh, then there are certain other technological properties like uh, relaxation of the pre-stressing steel, which is the same thing like a creep. Creep uh, for a sustained loading, you get a deformation. Here, the deformation is um, the strand will be stressed with a certain deform, a certain elongated uh, condition, and then the stress will get rela uh, relaxed. Basically, they are the same uh, property of the material. You can, for a concrete, we call it the creep. For a, a pre-stressing steel, we call it the relaxation. And uh, there is a, in a pre-stress concrete beam, there is a lot of interaction between the creep of a concrete and a relaxation of a steel. So they have to be in equilibrium with each other. And uh, um, in many codes, there is a factor when you combine these two effects together. So for the working out of relaxation losses, there are two types of uh, pre-stress steel. What is the normal relaxation and the low relaxation? Basically, the metallurgy, metallurgically, both the steels are the same, only there is a difference in the manufacturing process. Uh, means whatever the relaxation is there, they achieve it in the lab, uh, in the factory itself for a low relaxation steel, so that balanced relaxation is the less for that particular uh, steel. And these values are given always in terms of 100 hours uh, relaxation loss for uh, when it is stressed at a 70% of a uh, ultimate tensile strength at a 20 degrees Celsius. These are the standard uh, specifications. And the code gives uh, values at a various uh, stress level, initial stress levels from a 50% to 80%. And uh, if you see that if you are stressing the strand or cable up to 50%, there is no relaxation in the cable. Uh, these are for the normal and these are for the low, uh, low relaxation. So for 0 0.70, it is a five, uh, say 70% is a 5% of the um, initial stress and 2.5% of the further low reaction of steel. So these properties are universally almost same 
it was we are there in our earlier uh, IRC 21 also. And if you want to find out the relaxation losses up to 1000 hours, that is the initial period because uh, most of the designs are governed during the construction period. So during the construction period, if you want to have a check, uh, the code gives this particular numbers for normal and low relaxation from one hour to thousand hours. And if you want to uh, program it for your uh, software or Excel sheet, you can use this particular formula. You will get the same results at a various intermediate um, uh, days or hours. Then uh, this annexure gives a uh, suppose uh, if it is a precast um, uh, girders and you are using a spin curing for the achieving the early strength for a faster construction, then uh, you go for a spin curing which is a high temperature curing Th that affects the relaxation of a steel in that particular period. And how to work out that relaxation for a uh, higher temperature? So such information is uh, available in annexure. So you can refer annexure and work out what is the relaxation in that particular period. So that was so we uh, uh, were seen the, we have seen this uh, reinforcing steel and piston steel. Now we'll uh, see, uh, see the concrete, which is uh, covered in the uh, section 6.4. So there are uh, three types of concrete the code has suggested, the ordinary concrete, standard concrete, and high performance concrete. Ordinary means it is uh, by just a uh, volume mixing or uh, um, uh, nominal mix, mix, you can say. The standard concrete is uh, basically using the concrete mix design in the laboratory. And high performance concrete means you have to specify the performance. Um, it could be the RCTP, uh, this uh, uh, rapid collapse penetration, or maybe uh, some uh, different E value if you want to achieve, or um, uh, maybe a, uh, uh, you can specify a certain creep value for the concrete. So that those performance can be achieved for this type of a concrete uh, using the, uh, uh, some admixtures, or uh, like a silica foam or a flash or uh, certain chemical admixtures. So that's why it is a club under high performance concrete. And now the code is allowing up to M90. Earlier, uh, our IRC 21 or 18 uh, was restricted up to M80. So that is another uh, development in this particular code. Okay. Um, and uh, another bold step the code has taken is uh, uh, usually, we define a concrete by their 28 day strength. Now, the IRC 112 is allowing to use the strength at other days also, up to 84 days. Suppose if you are using a lot of flash, which uh, uh, retards the, um, uh, the reaction, and generally with the flash, you get a um, uh, required compressive strength at a say 56th day. So you can specify that uh, uh, this M45 grade at 56 days. Okay. But of course, uh, that decision should be based on achievement of earlier delayed strength and the age at which the first design load, apart from the self weight, is expected to resist it by the structure. So obviously, in those 56 days, you should be you should ensure that nothing, uh, no abnormal load is acting of the coming uh, will act on the structure. Okay. Otherwise, earlier what used to happen when you use a flash, uh, your characteristic strength was defined using a 28 days, which was a lower figure. So with this particular modification, you can use you can achieve a lot of economy in your structure. This was a really a bold step the code makers have taken. Okay, so uh, these are the design properties. Okay, so miss the code gives a uh, different, for example, a different E values. Hmm. Uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, the for the purpose of analysis, you can use. Uh, 5% uh, fractile value 
But when you want to say work out a deflection, uh, you have to use a mean value of a E. Because that 5% factor will depend, suppose if there is a cantilever bridge at one particular power, in, um, say at a uh, certain location, the concrete is of a poor quality, which is the falling in that 5% percentile, that will basically determine the safety of that bridge. Right? So that's why we have to consider this 5% fractile uh, while uh, checking the uh, sectional strength of that particular girder. But if you want to uh, find out the deflection at the tip of the cantilever bridge, uh, that deflection will be contributed by entire concrete in the that particular cantilever span. So there, for calculating the deflection, you have to use a mean value, that is ECM. Okay. Similarly, for uh, uh, for analyzing the impact or a shock loading or dynamic modulus of this elasticity should be used, which is the 1.25 times of a mean value. So again, for this uh, temperature, for a seasonal variation, you can reduce the E value by 50%. So code has specified all these numbers uh, at different places uh, so that you can economize your design to a great extent. And to uh, uh, make the life simple, they have given the various uh, uh, parameters uh, uh, for a different grade of a scale from M15 to M90. Various strain levels, then the uh, uh, characteristic tensile strength, say 5% fractile or 95% fractile or a mean value, uh, what is the characteristic strain, what is its mean strain. So all this data is available and uh, the formula or formulae, uh, uh, if you want to code or uh, uh, program it, uh, they are going in Alexia 2. Okay, so this uh, table is again an important table in the code. Again, um, uh, the relations is given how is the compressive strength or for that matter, any strength, whether it's a tensile or E value, how uh, varies with respect to time. So those formulas are available. Um, the, using this, those formulas, you can see that uh, if on the 20th uh, uh, day or a first month, how the strength is varies. Okay, over a six month, 12 month, 18 month, and so on. Uh, then the tensile strength, uh, which is again a useful for a, a serviceability limit set. Uh, number of times you will uh, have to use these particular values uh, in finding out the minimum uh, steel required for the cross section or to decide whether the section is a cracked or uncracked uh, in a, your shear uh, design. So these are the again uh, important numbers. Then again, uh, with respect to time, what is the how the tensile strength uh, increases? So that beta value is given here, and that is again the alpha that uh, exponent beta raised to alpha. That alpha is the one for a, a freshly cast concrete, and if it is more than one month old, then again the alpha values are different. The gain uh, is a slower for the uh, concrete, which is older than 28 uh, days. Then these are the stress and relationship for the concrete. This is a um, schematic representation for the concrete. These are second uh, modulus of elasticity. Uh, this is a EC1, which is a, um, uh, where we get a maximum strength, and this is a uh, ultimate uh, strain in the concrete and depending on your stress strain uh, curve, uh, this has been, I, this number one is uh, modified to two or three. So that particular table, I will, I will come when we dis uh, discuss this uh, different uh, stress strain curves. Yeah, the, so code is allowed to use uh, the, um, the stress strain curve like this, which is uh, defined in the annexure or with this particular equation, or you can use your uh, uh, conventional uh, parabola uh, rectangle curve, which is uh, we are using since uh, 1978 in our IS 456. Um, except this um, 
सीडी और दिस अल्फा इज अ डिफरेंट एंड इज द कवर्ड इन दैट पर्टिकुलर टेबल सो दिस अ सेकंड ऑप्शन फॉर द स्ट्रेस एंड कर्व एंड द थर्ड ऑप्शन इज अ रेक्टेंगुलर स्ट्रेस एंड ब्लॉक ओके सो हाउ टू गेट दिस पैराबोलिक स्ट्रेस एंड ब्लॉक द इक्वेशन इज प्रोवाइडेड which is useful for again a computer program and uh, uh, other is a bilinear stress strain relationship first straight again horizontal or rectangular stress strain uh, curve which is a uh, popular in a uh, uh, america that aci or astm or as uh, as uh, astro uh, they use this particular uh, block which is a uh, again a uh, very easier for a uh um, uh writing your own routine uh, or computer program but uh, uh, our 112 has given a choice for a designer how uh, whichever they are comfortable they can use it uh then uh, there is a uh, uh, multi uh, multi axial uh, stress strain curve or confined for the confined concrete uh, so that relationship uh is available in again in annexure 2 uh this is uh, uh required for uh, when you do a ductile detailing for uh, say uh using a sp114 uh, how with a confined reinforcement so that time this uh, additional strength or ductility uh, uh, that is selen uh, uh, from how that gain in a ductility is there so you can work out from this uh, formulas for your ductile uh, design and uh, nowadays it is not that popular but earlier we used to use a hinge in a concrete structure that is called a fresene hinge uh, using a certain shape for the concrete uh, without any reinforcement just a pcc used to uh, resist a huge compressive stresses uh with a uh, uh, uh this one rotation so there to of course again it was a uh, um uh, uh, device using uh, actual experimentation for using this formula you can design such uh, innovative um uh, uh elements then uh, what is the effect of a high temperature on concrete that again is a uh, specified in the annexure a2 then uh, the basic equations for determining the drying sinkage is given in a uh, using this equations again in annexure a2 and uh, for our regular routine uh, designs ha uh, it is uh, available in a uh, section 6 itself uh, so what is the uh, there are two type of sinkage one is the autogenous or you can call the chemical uh, reaction shrinkage which happens during the hardening process if, uh, and for various grades of the concrete the values uh, are given in the code which is ranging from the 35 to 105 as your water cement ratio reduces uh, for higher strength of the concrete how uh, your autogenous shrinkage increases okay so this is the one part Uh, of the shrinkage that is called uh, this uh, the epsilon cs is the total shrinkage this is the drying shrinkage and this is the autogenous shrinkage so autogenous shrinkage is these values and drying shrinkage is the basically um uh, uh, given for a various grades and various humidity conditions so it is a 620 uh, micron for m25 for uh, relativity of uh, relative humidity 20 and for uh, say 95 with a relative humidity of uh, uh, 80 it goes down up to 150 micron that is over 10 days to 6 and it depends on uh, what is the size of your element uh, which is called uh, nominal size the formula is given in the code and with that you can uh, uh, find out the drying uh, drying shrinkage which is required for a calculation of a losses ha uh, that is one of the its use or uh, uh finding the what is the differential force on a precast uh, composite uh, pre uh, uh girders then this is the variation again this uh, say for uh, this age from say 0 to 
uh, 10 raised to 5 on a log scale. And this is the shrinkage, it is zero. So as the uh, time goes, uh, initially that shrinkage takes place very fast. And then it, uh, uh, the speed is the less. So it is plotted for various grades of the complex. Then the creep, uh, all of you must be knowing about it. Uh, as long as the space in the concrete doesn't exceed 36% of the FCK, it is assumed to be a proportional to space that is a linear, which is the ratio of a creep strain divided by the initial or elastic strain at time of a loading. Uh, for uh, 70 years, the code has specified uh, what should be the this particular coefficient. Okay, final creep coefficient. Uh, uh, it depends on a uh, size that is for the uh, from the um, and the relative humidity and the age of the loading. As you load the element at the early age, you will get a higher creep. If you load at a later age, say about a year, you will get a lesser creep. Okay. Uh, so again, there are uh, equations are given. Uh, for various uh, humidity, relative humidity values and uh, uh, age of a loading, etc., etc. So you can refer a code and uh, do your own parametric uh, study to understand how the behavior, the concrete behaves when subjected to such phenomena. So this was a basically a section of uh, Six, which is uh, devoted for the material, and then uh, once you understand the material, its behavior, uh, both or uh, all the reinforcement, displacing, and uh, concrete, then how to use together for the you know, actual design? Okay, so that is a the first is the ultimate limit state. Uh, now, there is another chapter called uh, uh, for the analysis, which is again quite a descriptive chapter. I will just uh, uh, rush through that. Um, that is uh, section number seven. Um, methods of analysis, uh, linear elastic, uh, uh, both static and dynamic, linear elastic analysis with the limited distribution of the forces, non-linear analysis, material, both material and geometric. And uh, you can go for the strut and tie. Though our code has not given the, this particular method in detail, but they have permitted to use this particular method and they have asked to refer a specialized literature uh, where it could be a Euro code or it could be CEB FIB model code uh, 2010. And there is a one separate bulletin by FIB uh, on this start and time model. That is, I think, bulletin number uh, 40 or 42, I don't know the exact number. But it is a very useful uh, uh, method, and everybody must know this method when there is a uh, uh, discontinuity, which is uh, always there in you know, many of our structures. So, type of analysis it could be global or it could be local, depending on the area of interest. You can model the entire bridge globally, see its global behavior, or you can model a certain part of the uh, bridge where you want to study it in a detailed depth. Okay, so that is called local analysis, or you can have even a combination of both the models. Means in a global model itself, you can that particular uh, portion you can uh, detailed out in more uh, better way, um, because uh, local analysis again is the uh, how to impose a boundary condition from the global. That is again a tricky part. So depending on what you want, uh, you want to uh, make it more uh, certain. Uh, depending on it, you have to choose that analysis type. Then the, you can have a uh, model the foundation along with the um, uh, soil using a spring. Then there is always a debate what K value we should use. Uh, so there is again a number of literatures are there. And the second order P delta effect like this, uh, there is a uh, force acting on that. Because of that, uh, certain uh, imperfection, it will... Uh, move and then whatever that H and the P will also move along with this. And so that P into H will be a, that P delta or P into delta will be an additional bending moment at the bottom of the pier. And that will again keep on uh, deforming and it will stabilize. So you should consider that 
secondary effect uh, in your design so all those things are well described in the uh, code as well as a, there is a, all of you may be knowing there is a one handbook called sp 105 uh, published by irc so there are so a lot of things i have been explained or discussed so you can refer that particular book also published by irc then uh, the code uh, allows for this redistribution but there is a maximum limit say for example 15% of the maximum moment in a service will be limit state and 20% in a sls means whatever that uh, highest moment is there so that particular either 15 or 20% redistribution you can do not more than that then um, how to take uh, effect of this differential linkage in the serviceability as well as ultimate so that uh, in the uh, this um, uh, uh, composite uh, concrete construction and then uh, how to take effect of the pistis uh, in the structure um, so what should be the maximum pistising force uh, at active and during uh, tensioning is not exceeded 10, 90 percent of 0.1 percent proof stress um, it can go temporary we can go uh, over stress temporarily uh, to 95 provided the accuracy in the measurement that is your gauge gauges for the uh, pump etc they are very well calibrated uh, uh, within a four plus or minus five percent the maximum pre-stressing force p0 applied to the structure immediately after the transfer uh, shall not be greater than 75 percent of your characteristic or an 85 percent of a one percent proof stress whichever is the less so during tensioning how uh, you can go up to 90 or 95 percent but once you release uh, the jack and uh, anchorage are seated uh, that time uh, the uh, average should uh, should not be more than 75 percent or 85 percent or one percent proof stress so that precaution you have to take Um, so then the code has described uh, what are the various losses, uh, short term, long term, short term in you know, a pre-tension structure, short term in you know, a post-tension structures, and in the, both the structures, uh, what are the long term losses. Uh, so I am not going into detail, uh, it is already 520 and these are uh, all of you, you must be knowing about it. So this is... Uh, Losses due to the elastic deformation, the concrete, friction and wobble is our regular, uh, typical formula and the code gives uh, what are the uh, this uh, mu values and wobble coefficient for a different type of a ducts. Generally among this, we used to use this bright metal or galvanized uh, sheets earlier, but I think in last 20 years we are going only for the corrugated HDP. And uh, uh, these are the losses in the case of a pre-tensioning. So when you uh, tension the strands in that uh, casting yard, uh, and so initially uh, there will be, and we have to hold it, uh, the, those jacks, till your concreting is over. Uh, in the casting uh, bed or in the mold. So that small time, uh, there will be a relaxation will be happening. Okay, and you know the relaxation or a creep for that matter uh, uh, happens very fast in the initial period. Then there will be a, um, the, uh, during the transfer, we have to release that uh, jack. So that time there will be a anchorage drawing will be there at that uh, uh, stressing the uh, uh, bulkhead. So there will be a certain again drop in the pre stressing uh, force from here to here gradually. And then once you transfer to the concrete, uh, the girder will uh, shorten. And since the girder is shortening, obviously the force in the strands uh, will come down to that particular uh, extent. So that is the again a uh, immediate uh, loss in the pre stress. And once uh, you um, um, cut the wires, then obviously there will be a certain, for a certain length, again there will be a, uh, you can say that anchorage drawing will be there. And um, after that, this, these are the long-term uh, losses like a shrinkage creep, 
and the remaining uh, losses uh, due to relaxation. So these are the time dependent losses for uh, pre tensioning, and same thing is for uh, post tensioning. Post tensioning. Um, uh, since it is a wire to the stress and uh, block the cables at the same time, uh, so the first there will be a friction between the strand and the plastic or that metal duct. Uh, the elastic shortening if there are multi cables, if there is a single cable, obviously there won't be any elastic shortening loss. But there are some say 10, 15, or even two, uh, there will be elastic shortening losses. And while um, 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 uh, you um, uh, this wages uh, you uh, engage, uh, there will be a slip losses will be there. So the, all these things are the initial short term losses, and after that there will be a long term losses in the uh, steel. So this is for a post tensioning. So all these things are quite well described in the code uh, in the chapter of analysis because uh, all these things we have to consider during the analysis itself. And then the code suggests the different factors, uh, partial factors for the pre-stressing uh, forces. Generally, you have to consider this pre-stress uh, as a force acting on the structure. And uh, it is uh, either favorable or it is uh, unfavorable, depending on uh, what limit state you are uh, checking. Um, fine. So. Uh, um, uh, when there is an external unbounded tendons uh, used to achieve the stability, uh, there is a decrease in a force or increase in a force become a favorable for a stability. The partial factors of a point eight or 1.25 shall be used to decrease or increase the force as required. And for verification of a local effects, factor of a 1.3 is recommended. Then in a service related limit state, uh, there is a, uh, again uh, uncertainty is there. How uh, what uh, how calibrated your dial gauges are there? How uh, who are the operators? How trained they are? So there is a possibility of a, um, imparting a lesser stressing force in a structure, or it could be a overstressed uh, structure also. Again, it all depends on uh, again uh, the friction between the uh, the duct and the stressing steel. And many times nowadays we are saying that whatever the coefficients specified in the code, they are quite on a higher side. So we um, regularly are getting a higher elongations uh, than the expected. And um, uh, by the virtue of that, we may um, imparting a either lesser or a higher processing force in the structure. To cover that particular uncertainty, the code has given a, these two factors. Means we have to check the structure. With this uh, two factors, one is a gamma superior is a 1.1 for a post tensioning, and gamma inferior is a 0.9, and for a pre tensioning it is a 1.05 and uh, 0.95. So you have to carry out the check two times for a gamma superior and gamma inferior. Uh, in our earlier code, there is to be a clause. There were many tenders. There is to be clause that we have to keep some. I think five percent. Uh, 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 provision in the duct, not duct, but in the girder for a future pre-stressing. Okay. Or, so that is now been removed from the code because of this particular uh, factors which we are already considered in our uh, design. And then uh, uh, many times uh, we have observed that when the box girder uh, is a curved with a very sharp curvature, uh, this is the wave of the box girder. This is the same box. Okay. And this is the one simple uh, single wave. And the box is a curved in a plan. Okay. With this curved cables, there is a possibility of this uh, cable uh, rupturing out of the concrete if it is not properly checked uh, with this uh, punching shear. And many times it has happened actually at a site. And any other, any and other structures apart from the bridges. So this time, uh, this particular check has been introduced in our uh, IRC 112 to check for this uh, 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 popping out of the cable from the uh, curved wave. So this is a uh, basically a chapter on the uh, analysis. Hmm, how many 
So we'll go to this uh, ultimate limit state uh, design of the reinforced and of stress concrete element. That is a uh, uh, section number eight. See earlier, uh, as I told you, there were two different codes for a uh, reinforcement, reinforced concrete, and a plister concrete. Now it is a unified code. Now uh, uh, this uh, particular section is uh, devoted for the uh, actual member, uh, uh, thing, uh, line members like eye girders or even a box. Also, you can uh, idealize as a line element. Now, uh, uh, on which the bending moments and actual forces are acting. Uh, so, for design of such elements, uh, you can refer to this particular section. So, um, okay, so I, uh, this for a WSM, uh, this was the initial part. Then, uh, in the limit set, we are going with the uh, nonlinearity. Uh, I will skip this particular part, which you all of you are uh, now. Um, so, in the limit set, uh, in a working stress, there is to be a limit on a stress because you used to consider linearity. Okay, but as you are using the non-linearity uh, in the design, it is now difficult to now uh, specify this um, um, uh, stress as a failure criteria. Understood? See, if it would have been a linear uh, stress tension curve, uh, at any point you can define, uh, you can use this uh, stress as a failure criteria. But since it's now not linear, you can't use a stress as a failure criteria. So uh, automatically, you have to uh, now specify the strain as a failure criteria. Okay. So that is the again a major difference between the working stress and limit state method. In a working stress, we used to specify the stress. Uh, once the stress in a concrete reaches so and so value, uh, the concrete is that section is filled, or the stress in a reinforcement. This is that particular value in a compression or a tension, the section is a failed. Okay, that was the definition of failure or criteria for a failure. But in case of a limit state, ah, we can't define that. We have to specify the strain. So once the strain in a concrete or a steel reaches to that particular level, ah, you can um, uh, 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 or you can uh, declare that your uh, section is a failed. Okay, so. Um, in limit state, you use a strain criteria. In a working state, you used to use a stress criteria. Okay. So now, uh, uh, okay. So these are the uh, uh, the re uh, realistic uh, stress strain curves in the laboratory. Again, not a very. It is again a, a simplified. And for the design, uh, it is a further simplified in this particular uh, stress strain curve. And everywhere. We are defining this strains. Okay, for a concrete, it is a uh, epsilon Cu2. If it is a parabolic, if it is a rectangular, it is a epsilon Cu3. If it is a this kind of a thing, then it is a epsilon Cu1. So these strains are specified in the code. Uh, in the, that table number 6.5, what should be the failure strain for the concrete? Okay, when it is a actually loaded element, then we are limiting to the epsilon. Uh, Cu uh, epsilon C has uh, only C R2, uh, or here it is the epsilon C1. Same thing is in a reinforcement, this uh, strain values are given, limiting strain values in a stress, this limiting strain values are given. Okay. So these uh, assumptions, all of you know the plane section given plane, etc. etc. I will not go through that. Okay, so now this is an important diagram uh, in our IRC 112. If you understand this particular diagram, uh, then you are you can uh, literally you can design any type of a bridge or any structure. This is a, nothing to do with the bridge. It is a common for all RCC or PSC as uh, structure. So you have to uh, understand this uh, diagram, which is called possible strain distribution in a Ultimate limit state. Hmm. So, what are the various possibilities of a strain uh, uh, within which the section is a safe? So, if your point is somewhere outside of this particular uh, domain uh, or this particular strain limits, 
or you can say that particular section is a field. So we'll just go through that, that particular diagram in detail in the next uh, slides. Am I going a bit fast or shall I slow down my... I think oh. uh, Rashika, it's good. You're going. Ah. And, uh, yeah, okay. speed is okay, sir. Okay, okay. okay. fine. Thank you. Okay, so let's see. Um, this is a cross-section uh, of the concrete. Uh, there is a tensile uh, uh, reinforcement. There is a reinforcement on a compression side. Uh, the height is H. And uh, these are the frame uh, possibilities. So when there is a no force acting, how uh, perpendicular to the section, uh, the strain in the both the material, the concrete as well as the steel, is a zero. Okay. So uh, the strain in a concrete is zero, strain in a steel is zero. Uh, this particular is a strain in a tensile steel, and this is a strain in a compressive steel. So without any external load, no strain in a section. So uh, now suppose if you are uh, uh, applying a uniaxial tensile force on the section, what will happen? This concrete obviously will crack and we, as per the assumptions, we are not considering the whatever the tensile, whatever small is there, how we are not considering in our resistance. So the entire tensile force will be taken by this reinforcing steel. As you keep on increasing this uh, tension in the bar, uh, say on the section, uh, the stress in the steel will go, up, go uh, will go up mainly the strain, and then the stress as per the piston diagram, and uh, uh, it will reach to the maximum strain level. Okay, so what is that particular now the phenomena? Uh, it will be something like this. So now it has reached to this epsilon UD, UD is a design value, which is a 90% of a epsilon UK. You remember no, that uh, we uh, explained during a stress strain diagram. So once it reaches to that particular uh, strain limit, uh, that is a maximum tensile force this section can carry. Once you multiply this strain value by appropriate value uh, uh, from that stress strain curve, the stress stress value. So this is the one side. Okay. Now suppose if you apply the purely axial compression on the this section, so that section will keep on um, shortening, and the compressive strain in the section will increase from this zero state or to this particular state. So how much it can go? It can go up to point epsilon Cu two. Huh? So every time you have to refer that stress strain curve, which we have discussed earlier and uh, what, what what will be the value of this uh, uh, epsilon? If you remember, it is a 0 0.002. Okay. Uh, so this is a limiting value for the strain when the section is subjected to the purely axial compression. Now, these are the two limits for the axial force. This is a maximum limit for the tension. This is the maximum limit for the compression. Now, the section can carry the bending moment uh, within this range. Now, if you apply the bending moment, uh, the axial force carrying capacity, whether it's a tension or a compression, is uh, bounded by these two limits. Okay. Now, what will happen? Suppose uh, this particular, I am stressing this um, uh, uh, section uh, in a purely axial tension. And now suppose uh, if I start releasing the strain from one side by applying the bending moment, the um, uh, this particular strain will remain at the design level, and this particular uh, uh, um, the variation in the strain will start uh, 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 like this. Okay, so this is a purely axial tension. The neutral axis lies outside the uh, uh, still neutral. There is no neutral axis. There is no zero stress. This is a pure compression. Again, the neutral axis lies outside the section. Limit on a strain is a 0 0.002, which is uh, this particular limit. If you see, uh, remember this test and diagram, not this 0 0.0035. 
Yeah, this is a epsilon C U is basically this particular value, ninety percent over epsilon U K. So, um, okay, oh, what happened? Uh, yeah, now I am applying uh, this uh, bending moment on this uh, when the section is a fully stressed. So, this particular strain at this particular tensile strain at this particular fiber will start reducing now. Okay. It will start producing and will reach towards the zero value. But this particular, I'm keeping this as a, a limiting value at that particular point. So this is the uh, basically zone uh, where the tensile load with a bending moment, neutral axis still lies outside the section. And uh, still on uh, one side is a, uh, still at an ill, 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 Ill stress, uh, state. Now I'm applying the further bending moment. So what will happen? Uh, I am this particular now. Uh, earlier it was in a, a tension. The tension start got reduced to the zero value, and now this uh, uh, the concrete uh, will come in picture. And then because here we have neglected the strength of the concrete, from this point onward the concrete strength will come in the picture for resistance of the bending moment. The strain value will increase from zero to epsilon Cu2 maximum. Now that epsilon Cu2 is 0 0.0035 and not 0 0.002 uh, which was in, in our earlier slide. So this is the zone 2. Okay. And um, uh, still what is the governing? Governing is the strain in the steel. And at, when it reaches uh, here, the, both the strain in a concrete and the steel uh, is governing the uh, section. Then um, uh, now uh, uh, I can't go further. I can't increase the strain behind this particular point because this is a limited strain. Now by keeping this put at this particular point, that is a pivot point. Now I will release this tension and I will um, um, the reduce the tensile st uh, strain at that particular level. So the strain now here it will start reducing towards a uh, zero, but in between uh, it will come at a yield point. The yield is between the zero to um, the, the ultimate. Okay, so this is a uh, this is a yield point and this is the ultimate point. Now, once I start reducing the tension, uh, it has to this particular strain while move, uh, moving from this point to this point. At this particular point, it will um, come across this yield point. Okay, so this is that particular point. So now at that particular stage, uh, my, uh, and the steel is at a ill point and the concrete is at a maximum strain. Right? So what is this particular uh, state is uh, known as? Uh, it is a balanced section. Means at this particular uh, uh, strain distribution, both my concrete as well as the steel uh, is at a uh, steel at a ill point and a, uh, uh, concrete is at a 0 0.0035 and this is the uh, depth of the neutral axis at that particular point. Okay, so now um, um, the, I'm further now reducing this uh, strain and now this is going in a compression. The neutral axis was here within the section uh, and now the neutral axis is somewhere here which is uh, uh, at 0 0.002 uh, two level. Okay, and this particular now pivot is a 3 seventh of a H, total uh, height of the uh, section. Um, so the green line is the basically uh, the balanced condition. Okay. And now uh, uh, again at a point, uh, at this particular point, this line, if I rotate, uh, I will get, get this particular uh, line, vertical line, which is the um, uh, the ultimate strain for the pure compression. So this is how the strain distribution uh, varies uh, in the any cross section, whether it's a box girder, eye girder. And um, when uh, you analyze, uh, after analysis, you get an uh, actual force and the bending moment in that particular section. Uh, uh, you have to, uh, for given actual force, you have to find out a resistance, resisting bending moment. Okay. Um, so this is a uh, how that strain gets uh, uh, the changes from the 
at a various strain distribution uh, across the section. And from that, you can work out the uh, uh, resisting moment for the given axial force. So that is the heart of this ultimate limit state in our IRC 112. Okay. So this particular thing you can use when the element is loaded purely axial. It can be loaded in a purely without any axial force and purely in a flexure. So all these condition scenarios huh, can be uh, explored using this strain distribution diagram. So these are the various things what we have discussed with the various strains uh, on this uh, one particular diagram. You some of you may not have understood uh, thoroughly, but once you read this that particular two pages in the IRC one one two, you will. I think you will understand. <clears throat> okay, now uh, now it is a five forty five. Um, how to go about this design checks? Uh, it is using a manual as well as a computer program. Uh, is explained in these slides. Means you have to see the equilibrium for the applied load, whether it is the tension or compression. You have to uh, select the strain distribution. Uh, in the section, you have to decide what is the depth of the neutral axis, what could be limiting strain, and with that uh, strain distribution, you work out the stresses using a stress strain diagram in both all the three materials, uh, integrate it, find out the total uh, axial force. If it is a matches with your uh, applied axial force, then your assumptions are right. And for that particular strain distribution and the stresses, you now work out what is the bending moment uh, about the neutral axis. And that is known as a resisting bending moment. That resisting bending moment you compare with the applied bending moment. If it is a more, then your section is the safe. <coughs> so that is a procedure. Uh, uh, and then there is a workout example given here with a composite uh, eye girder and a slab. Uh, how the first initial assumption of the neutral axis and assumption about the strains at a various uh, levels across the depth of the section are assumed based on that what is a uh, stress strain diagram for the concrete and uh, still you know already using uh, that particular diagram curve and then uh, you uh, work out what are the various stresses, strains. Uh, so you can go through these numbers uh, when you get time. So what are the assumptions we have made? Uh, that total force uh, is equal to this. Um, so, whatever the tension uh, was uh, 10,144 that matches with the compression in the concrete is a 10,148 approximately, which is so the, our assumptions are correct. Okay, and uh, for that particular now uh, distribution of the strains, you can find out the uh, resisting moment that is the MRD by taking the um, uh, uh, force multiplied by the lever arm. So, this is the bending moment. Uh, for that particular strain distribution or a stress distribution, you worked out and then you compare with the actual applied bending moment. If it is a less than 18,000, you are safe. If it is a more than 18,000, you have to revise the concrete section. Either you have to increase the dimensions or increase the grade or increase the reinforcement, depending on how which strain is uh, 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 basically governing the design. So these are the simple steps. Uh, and that is the end of my presentation. Uh, what you can do, there are a few more examples going in SP105 uh, for the pier with a uniaxial uh, bending moment, with a biaxial bending moment, how to check, how to uh, make the various uh, iterations, etc., etc. So you can go through those uh, uh, pages uh, to uh, understand it in more depth. Okay, so thank you. Thank you for your attendance. I think I don't I think Dr. Yeah, you have finished. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'm sure uh, you would be pleased to answer a few questions. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Only I think uh, some 
what beta factor uh, we adopt in uh, bridge design in india i think you answered that yeah yeah it is a 3.75 and uh, yes. 4.3 uh, or 4.75 and uh, 3.2 yeah this is similar to our uh, euro codes euro codes uh, second question he is asking about the stress blocks uh, why rectangle and uh, the triangular i think that choice is given to the engineer that correct correct whoever okay. is comfortable in that particular yes. stress block see yes. what is happening now see nowadays lot many mnc's are uh, opened their shop in india Sir, sir. At the same time, lot many uh, softwares are made available, or Correct. they are available, uh, including a uh, Midas, Sophistic, and uh, 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 this um, uh, SAP 2000, etc., etc. Yes. So all these softwares have already built all these mod uh, 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 models. So to make use of them uh, and make the life of the designer simply uh, simpler, uh, all the four models are given in the code. Otherwise, generally, somebody wants to use the same rectangular space space uh, curve, but the authority then will not allow. They will ask uh, where where this uh, model is specified in the code. Uh, so it, uh, there is to be a problem. So all the models are now specified. The next question is, sir, what is the effect of reinforcement to counter the shrinkage of concrete longitudinal member like girder? That's what he is asking. um see the reinforcement will always uh, to, uh, offer a resistance but uh, that is um, many times is not considered but if you want to consider that resistance to the shrinkage as well as the creep creep generally we modify that uh, uh, through the m value we take care of that creep uh, for the long term behavior but even in front of the shrinkage you can uh, take into account not a major problem The next question is why mean strength is chosen in Euro code and in IRC 112 for design than characteristic strength which is being used in the IS 456. No, the question is not clear. Just a minute, I will. Uh, uh, that what is, is that? What is the? What is the? Why mean strength chosen in Euro code and in uh -huh. IRC one? Ha, uh -huh. mean strength. Mean strength, yeah. Actually, I have explained. Uh, see, the, the many of the properties uh, are related with the mean st uh, strength. For example, I have given an example of the cantilever bridge. If you want to find out the uh, uh, deformation, and the um, entire mass of the concrete uh, uh, plays a role, come into action. So we have to use the mean value for that entire mass. But if you want to check the type, uh, the uh, Safety or strength of that particular cantilever uh, 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 beam, and uh, there is a possibility of a one particular uh, batch of the concrete is of a poor quality, which is coming in that five percent fractile uh, zone. Okay, so to take care of that such a eventuality uncertainty, how uh, we have to use a characteristic strength um, um, uh, 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 for that uh, design check. Otherwise, if you You can't use mean there, but at the same time, if you use a say characteristic strength for a calculation of a uh, deformation, um, uh, you will get a uh, quite a high value of the deflection, which is uneconomical. Yes, yes. So that is a, uh, the rational approach this Euro code or IRC one one two has taken. Yes, yes. Uh, one last question: Can we uh, take, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, can we consider the concrete in tension zone in the ultimate state analysis as per this code? I think uh, uh, yes, you are already actually, taken that zone. Actually, we have not uh, permitted, and uh, for uh, such a major uh, section, uh, that will be also often not that much give a economy. But if somebody wants to use, yes, you can use it. Ah, uh, you have to only convince the your authority. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think those are the main questions, sir. I think we have uh, through with that.